way too time consuming. I've actually done this process. It takes like a day. Okay, like if you don't have a day, just spend it with people. Um, and I also want to create something that's extremely portable. You can use it anywhere, right? You're not limited to where you have all these cameras around. We don't use any cameras. We just use sensors. So. So basically we came up with this. It's a system that uses these tiny sensors. It's practically weightless. Um, our system's modular, so we can actually put it on any part of the body that we want. Okay? And it works with an iPhone or iPad. Right? So I'm using an iPad here so you can see a little bit better, but you can literally have our sensors on you, iPad, iPhone in your pocket, and it works. So, so why does this matter? Why do you want to measure this stuff? So, you know, already today you've gotten great information from the other speakers around you know, where your body should be, your balance point, chest, rotation, all of that. Um, so what we're doing is giving you the tools to measure that. Okay, so you could take all of this information, because one of the problems I'm going to solve at the start of this is a term called proprioception. And basically proprioception is what you feel like you're doing, right? And the problem with most athletes is that feel versus real is dramatically different, right? You, could, you can have a great coach, or you watch something, you learn something, and you try to replicate that motion, and you think you're doing that, but in actuality you aren't. So what this is all about at the end of the day is the ability to take all this great information that these guys are giving you, measure it, see if you're actually doing what you want to be doing, and then train you on improving that. Okay? So let me give you a couple of examples. I know it's a little feel free to come closer. So as, uh, as Chris said, we actually started in golf. Uh, and in golf, there's actually years and years of data on this stuff. So you probably have more 3D motion data than any other sport. Uh, so it was a good way to go in. Um, and then about two years in, we decided to go into baseball. Uh, so I got invited by a pro team to come out and try and measure some of their players and see what this 3D stuff is all about. Uh, so one of the terms that you hear a lot, uh, and the reason it's important, it's really hard to measure without these tools. Uh, it's called kinematic sequence. Has, any, has anybody heard of kinematic sequence? Kinetic chain, right? Stuff like that, right? So it's really the concept of a whipping, right? I got you cracked, cracked a little broker today. Um, and the idea is that the only way that you can get something that's moving pretty slowly in the beginning to the tip of that whip literally breaking the speed of sound, which is why you hear that crack, is that everything has to go in the right order. So it has to transition in the right order, and actually has to decelerate in the right order, and then that energy flows, right? So you could be the strongest athlete in the world, but if your kinetic chain's off, it's not gonna translate. So this was, uh, this was one of Five sensors on them at its hip, chest, arm, and back. And with 3D, you can actually, unlike a 2D video camera, you can actually see your swing. Swing in, out, and shoot from any angle. Okay. So, one of the things that we looked at, I'll show you the technical version and the simpler version first. how fast your hips are accelerating, decelerating, order, and all of that. And when I saw this batter, basically it just, just jumped out. His hips were late. So he's actually kind of initiating the swing with his chest. And if you think about that, all that power that you're generating, right? So how do we generate power? We push off the ground, the ground pushes back, and then the rest of your job is really to push that power through your chain into your arm or the back as efficiently as possible. Now when I 
guy's throwing with his chest first and second his leg, he's not utilizing it. And this is a big 6'2", 240-pound lefty, massive leg. He wasn't utilizing that at all. So a simpler view of that in asking our coach is the deceleration of the sequence was chest, arm, hip, back. We're looking for hip, chest, arm, back, things moving in this direction. So when we measure him, his back speed was, peak back speed was uh, 1,968 degrees per second. coach used his intelligence, he gave him a drill that would fix that, right? So we, we told him the problem, he gave him a drill to fix that. Five minutes later, see that green? Hip, chest, arm, back. Okay, so what? So what is his back speed is about to be 21 that's 10%. That's a lot. You know, and I, I don't know the exact numbers in baseball, but for a golfer, that would be like in a 40 more yard tee drive. Right? So they would have been happy with 2 or 3%, but five minutes, one adjustment, he gained 10% more speed. Okay? Now, obviously, he's got to train that motor pattern, right? You know, he's got to use that drill that the coach was giving him, but we see this over and over. The, 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 the kinematic sequence max or optimize the chain, which is how your body moves. I'm not making you stronger or more flexible in five minutes, just teaching you the right motor pattern, and that's how it goes. The other thing I think just noticed today, because I was so focused on the speed game we gave him, we actually came up with a measure. And one of the things we do is we work with a lot of the premier coaches, and one of our coaches who worked with the Rangers, he said, we used our system every day with their players, he said, one of the things he noticed was that the better hitters just had a more stable spine, right? He's like, can you measure that for me? I'm like, sure, so we called up one of our scientists, he wrote a formula for us, so we, we created this uh, metric called spine stability. And that basically is, is for a hitter, when you initiate that swing, typically measured from the hip starting location, I don't care if you're swinging around with it, up. as soon as you start that swing, I'm measuring how efficiently you're rotating around your spine. If you, if you start doing this, or this, or any of that movement, you start off with a score of 100, and I start taking away points every time you do that, right? Because two things are gonna happen when you don't have that spine stability. First, it slows down your rotation, right? And the speed of the bat is highly correlated to how fast your chest rotates. So if I'm moving around, I can't rotate as fast. The second thing is just consistency. You know, am I gonna be really able to hit that ball when my chest is moving all over? So, even though I don't think the coach meant it, that one drill he gave him, he went from a spine stability score of 82, which is pretty bad actually. Just by following the sequence, his spine stability score went to 94, which is really good, right? So we have, you know, that's just one example. We have all of this data that we can generate to help you get more speed, get more consistency, have a better spine plan, all of that. So I'm starting to see some eyes glaze over, so let me, let me give you some visual stuff.
just about perfect, right? So again, it's, it's very simple feedback. Measure it, turn on those tools, and in that, that other case, right, the spine is a little bit too high up, the relation to the bat is off, so it's giving you feedback on what to work on. And then when you can get this, you can have that 90 degree relationship. Um, probably can't see, but uh, you know, I've heard force vectors, I've heard acceleration, body pads, so these tools, you can actually measure all of that. Right? So we know what direction you're applying the force to the handle of the bat. And the reason that's important is the center of mass of that bat, which is, much, which is where the sweet spot of the barrel is, has to follow the force that you're putting on it. Right? So we want to know, you know, uh, you know the force is the predictor of where that center of mass is going. So you can start to get information on, hey, how am I applying force to that bat that's going to get the bat position that I want? So while we were preparing, we actually measured a little bit. And what I mean by transition sequence is as I start my swing, in what order are my body parts moving, right? The worst order, and don't feel bad about this, because I've seen pros with pretty bad order, would be what do you think the worst, what do you think would probably be the worst thing to have to do first in a swing? You have an answer. What do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, again, if you think about, and, you know, if I'm trying to throw a whip, probably the worst thing I can try to do is throw the end of that whip first, right? And that's what we call it casting. So if the first thing that's moving is the bat, that's not good, okay? Everything's kind of got to go inside out, right? Think about your hands and the bat is the tail of that whip, and your, your hips and your lower body is the handle of that whip. Okay? So that wasn't, if, if your transition order was arm, bat, chest. So we would work. <laughs> we would we would work on that. The second part of uh, kinematic sequence is what we call the, the deceleration order, or you could think about the, the order at which a body part reaches its peak speed before it starts to accelerate. And in, in, ba in baseball, it's, it's almost equally as important, right? Because that's how the energy transfer. So you were arm, chest, and back. Okay. So you know, if I'm your coach. Before getting into some of these other things and conditions and you know, how fast the test is moving, I want to fix that sequence because that's probably going to give you the most velocity. Okay. The other thing is, is, is finding stability for your swing. It's hard. So, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you were, if you're, uh, uh, your bad attack angle is positive 8 degrees, which is good. as possible, so we light up a sensor and we tell you where to put it on.
camera based system, like the thing I showed you at the beginning, this part would probably take it over an hour. direction it went. You can even put pitch location, right? Because your body's going to move differently in the pitch location. So if you're looking at it, like, why was his chest bent over this much? Well, it could have been a low outside pitch, right? Um, and then you can put whatever information else you want. There you are. stuff that we can measure and you know if if you're a if you're a coach who's let's say more focused on leg work our sensors are modular you can take the same six sensors put them on your legs um, and uh, as a company we, we really like to work interactively with our clients um, so we, we put out a new software release I would say on average every three to four weeks so we get requests come in uh, we have new configurations new analytics whatever it is out right away, so we're constantly improving our system. Um, the other thing that's really uh, a great tool, uh, and we'll do a pitching example, uh, even more important pitching, is uh, kind of the hip to chest relationship, right? How are you how are you generating power from your legs and then leveraging your spine? Questions so far? Comments?
the base camp? Recording, we want to capture what we're doing so that when we go back and look, you know, we're looking at it. Hip chest, hip chest, we're looking for. Um, we also measure how much speed you gain, your gain, how much speed you're gaining through your segment, right? So he was, his chest is moving 36% faster. Right? So that's not bad. Got about this much, he's got about this much. And I remember passing this guy, and he wasn't even he wasn't even warming up yet. And it was just that relaxed speed. He just looked like he was and the ball just popped. Right? So he's he's generating a lot of it. He's taking all that power he's getting from the ground, pushing off, getting that separation, and then letting it. Questions? 
Like it? Don't like it? So do you have do you have like averages for the angles as this is a good range for you to be in so that yeah. coaches can learn what things need to be? Yeah. So you know I, what we first done is is you know, we get a lot of requests for more information. So it seems like the more data that we get, we get requests for more and more data. Um, and I would say one of the things that we want to be careful about is um, you know, not giving out information that hasn't been scientifically proven. So what we tend to do is when we found that there is research, right, I start color coding things, right? Green, yellow, red, right? If there's not research, I'll give you the information and I'll even give you a range. But you know, I think the coach has to kind of understand the player and his mobility, et cetera. But as, as we get more and more pro data for each of the metrics we provide, at the very least, we'll show you what the kind of the averages are, right? The ranges, and kind of what to decide from there. Um, one more thing I want to show. Um, it's actually something we've been working in R and D. It's very much not ready for production, but I'm going to take a chance and see if it works. So go Sam, go Sam. <laughs> Give you a little background on this. Um, I think when we first started uh, developing this tech, um, our, our first sets of customers were MLB teams and people who just knew a ton about biomechanics, and it kind of led us in a direction of building this really powerful, but for a lot of coaches, a little bit overwhelming tool, right? Sometimes too much information. Um, and we have, even with a six sensor system, we have like 30 options on where you can put the sensor. Right, you want to, you know, it could be something about the, the timing of foot strike to something happening with the wrist, etc. Um, but uh, but we, we we did get the message that some of this stuff is a little bit too complicated, uh, and also just the setup process and everything. So we created this this new technology that we're looking to introduce in about a month or so, which is to simplify the whole thing. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to give you one example. It was uh, what one of our uh, pro team uh, player development coaches asked for. this, we didn't have to do any of that setup process. You just put it on, and he doesn't even have to wait for me. So just go ahead and take a chance. Go ahead and take a chance. Coach Sparks? <laughs> so uh, what this is doing now is we, we kind of freed up the sensor. So now you can actually use this in-game. Right, no practice, there's no, there's no interruption from the workflow. And I can start setting targets for chest speed and spine stability. So this one, this module, all it does is measure how fast your chest is rotating and that spine stability score, right? And, um, and you can see your own progress, right? Like, you know where you were, so then, you know, every time you, you know, we you know, improve for a little bit more stability, a little bit more speed to the chest, and we have all the data. So just go ahead and take a chance. So now I have to start, stop, Put it on, go. So when you when you have the when you hear the beep, it's it's telling you that you you did you did the uh, uh, how does that so this kind of flips our stability.
to me, he's able to make that immediate adjustment and get immediate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like the diamond kinetics thing, right? So there, there's kind of a, you know, data's great, uh, but I had one coach tell me uh, at a player development, using our system for a while, he said, we now, I now know why, what's wrong with all my players, <laughs> but help us train them, right? So then it's, it's understanding, you know, doing a diagnostic, right? We want to put this emphasis on it. We want to get a measure, pick something to work on, and then have a module like this that just gives them instant feedback. And then they can just kind of fine tune with every movement. Because um, you know, you're, you're not going to learn without feedback. So what we're developing is we're going to develop modules for you know, uh, hip chest separation, stability, sequence, um, you know, all that stuff. So you just put it on. And, and the beauty of this is because there's no more start stopping. You just put them on. Now when you get in game, right, that's the other huge effect, right? Under the pressure of the game, everything changes, right? So capturing this stuff in game is, is one of the biggest, biggest benefits I think. But just worrying about all day long. You don't have to worry about, you know, I, I think one of the things that I mean it, it, it's people still do because the information is great, but they don't like it if the if the technology starts to change how they have to set up their practice, right? So what we're trying to do is just continuously improve the tech so that Quite honestly, what I was hoping to do like six years ago when I started this, I just thought, hey, just put the sensors on and, and go, and get all this information. Uh, but it took six years, <laughs> six years to figure out how to do that. It's, uh, it's not that simple. But yeah, this, this is, I think you know, we're going to be able to do this with multiple sensors, but just put it on, you go. You don't even have to have your phone nearby. All this stuff is done on sensor. So, uh, but obviously, you can then go back. We'll give you all of the data so you can you know, report, you can analyze, you can do all that stuff. And then matching this up with in-game results, I think, is, is going to be key. Any questions? I mean, go through. All right, guys, if you have any questions right now on the live stream, uh, now would be a great time to ask. I was just saying, go through um, how affordable the system is. I think a lot of people see these systems and they think uh, expensive. Yeah. Just tell them how affordable it is. Yeah, so uh, as Brent said, one of our key goals to develop this is affordability. Right? It didn't make any sense to me that you have to pay $10,000, 20000 $30,000 for a system. And if you do that, very few people are going to be able to use it. So our system starts at like hundred thousand dollars. So a two sensor system, which you could do, you know, that hip chest uh, separation, I think it's like five, six hundred dollars. Um, six sensor system is, is still under two thousand dollars. I mean, if you compare that to some of the, you know, some of the other systems out there, that are, <laughs> that are a lot more expensive. Uh, I mean, our, our 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 business model. be simple, has to be powerful, uh, but has to be affordable, right? So we're just looking to create affordable tech that everybody can use. Um, and, you know, I've done this a lot. My, my son played baseball, uh, measured all the players, and, you know, some of the stuff that we've shown them, I, I just, you know, kids have taken lessons for eight years, but, you know, has anybody pointed this out to you? And, you know, it was, it was pretty impactful stuff for them. And, and, and my goal from, you know, I have two athletes in this team. And some, some of their instructors are great, um, some less so. So we really want to bring in just real science, right? Just, I can tell you that Dolph went through this about 10, 15 years ago. And maybe more than half the stuff that they used to teach, once it was tested in the lab, they changed. They're like, no, you know, X factor is actually less important than X factor stretch. Talking about before, you do want to get that hip and chest separation, but if you go out of order, right? So even if I create a 45 degree separation, if my chest goes first, it's it's like that rubber band going slack. But if my hip goes first, what happens is that 45 turns to 47, 48, and at the last minute your, your muscles go like this, and then you get that pop, right? So so I, I think this is gonna happen in baseball too, as we can measure more things, we're gonna test. 
is, is, is what they, you know, is that particular thing, you know, in a, in a conducted in a laboratory with data, you know, enough trial, does it really have that effect? Um, and we also, you know, we have top advisors in our company, not the baseball stuff. Uh, we also have kinesiologists who are professors at universities who do this measurement for us and, and understand the basic biomechanics of cause and effect. So, you know, like I said, we're very, we're going to give you the ability to measure everything, uh, but we're going to be very careful about telling you what's right or wrong, so we know for 100% that that's true. Talk about some of the, op, like if you're going to purchase, what's the optimal amount of sensors to kind of start with? Yeah, so we sell uh, two sensor sets to, to make 12 sensor sets. Um, I actually, you know, believe it or not, discourage coaches from starting off with a 12 sensor set. Um, I'd love to take your money, but uh, I think uh, for coaches, six is a good number because you'll be able to, and, and a lot of times you're, you're probably only going to be just putting two or three on matches, right, just to focus the training. But six is going to give you a lot of flexibility. You can do the upper body, lower body, lead side, trail side, all that, and full systems modular. Um, uh, but we also have player products. And again, I wanted to make them more affordable. So our player versions, even for the same upper sets, are cheaper than the instructor version. Uh, the only main difference is it only allows you one profile, right? So you're using it for yourself. Uh, uh, so Claire, I, I would, you know, I would highly recommend you could start with like a two sensor system. Uh, we did a great one with Top Velocity, so it's a two sensor hip chest pitching module. It's going to give you that sequence. It's going to give you the separation. It comes with a video, so it'll explain to you how to how to set it up, how to use it, what information you're looking for. Um, and you know, I don't mind our customers starting small because you can always add more. Right? And, and we set up our pricing that if you started with a two and you end up with six, it's no more expensive than if you bought six right away. So uh, learn how to use the system, you know, work on one thing, and perfect that. You, know, you can always add more and more sensors. Do you, do you find that in your clients, whether it be golf, whether it be hitting, whether it be pitching, the thing that leads to power, not necessarily the sequence, but the thing that leads to power within the body is like the two sensor to read that separation? Is that what most coaches will look at to see how much potential power the body can have? Is the hip to shoulder separation? Is that what it leads to? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, like, like, you're, like you said, you're talking, right? So it generates power from the ground, right? So it's why, of course, plates are so popular in golf, right? So just using your feet to push off the ground from, you know, and the stability of that, right? But a lot of that will translate into how your hip swing, right? How your pelvis swing. If you're not using the ground effectively, then uh, and, 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 you know, you're not in the right position, your hips aren't going to get loaded as quickly. So we not only look at you know, what's your, you know, how fast your hips are rotating, but we look at the acceleration pattern, the deceleration pattern, right? So if you have a pattern that looks like, like a really sharp hill up and down, that's ideal. That means you're accelerating really fast and accelerating fast, right? A lot of times, even in pro athletes, I'll see something that kind of looks a little funky in the beginning. So even though they're powerful and they may be generating force off the ground, you know, it could be something with their hip rotation. It could be a mobility issue, so they they can't translate that to the to the turn. You know, if I'm that athlete's coach, I'd, I'd probably send him to a trainer to figure out if he has a mobility issue first. And why can't he accelerate properly? But then it's a whole chain. It's like I've measured, you know, 90 pound, 11 year old kids who can spin their hips like anything, but they, they don't have the strength to translate that, right? So if you don't have the core strength, you might have super fast hips, but your chest is, you know, 10% faster than your hips. Then you know it's it's not translating throughout the hips. So now you got to work on your core. So a lot of this stuff actually, uh, we have a whole other side where uh, trainers use our system to, to do, you know, uh, take them through range of motion analysis, to do some tree sweeping screens, because, uh, you know, before you really start asking an athlete to do something, you, you want to make sure it's capable of doing it, but, right? If it's not capable of doing it, you might just start to hurt, right? So, uh, we do that as well. Would you recommend that they just download the app? Don't you have some features for them just in downloading the app? Yeah, so you, the, the app is free. Um, so you can download it and it has a couple of examples of some pros. So you can just see how a, a pro is moving. Uh, 
Um, and then when you want to buy the system, you place an order, you get the sensors, you get a license code that will allow you to activate it with one of the different sensors. Also, too, a lot, I'm like you with it. Like guys, players, coaches can share, uh, say, a, a swing or whatever. They can share it, and then you can access it through your app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we all of our stuff is cloud-based. So, you know, as an athlete, if you're working with a coach who has the system, you could download the app for free um, and just log in with the same profile that your coach created for you, and then you could, you know, you could see all of your swings completed, and that's completely free. So. Um, and then we have sharing functionality so that, you know, coaches, you know, if you go to get trained by a specialist and, uh, who has this, uh, you can share that with your coach. So we have full you know, sharing functionality as well. That's cool. Is the app clean? I'm sorry? Is the app clean? Uh, so it's for D and then a space and then motion. Yeah. Quick question online sure. here. The question is, do you have the ability to measure your barrel metrics in relation to the body metrics within the same swing? Uh, yes, because we can, we can actually put a sensor on the body in the back to get, to get the, the relationship. So like I showed with the spine to, uh, spine to back uh, angle, we can just see what, what you are so that one. Okay, screen, one more call. If you have any questions, now is the time to ask. For the Motion Sports Center. Did you let me make the way? All right, anything from anybody else? Awesome. All right, let's give Sang a good. Uh, All right, we're going to cut the stream. We'll be back in 10 minutes.